Hi everybody, today I'm doing a video for you on how I bead my mirabilia. I have had a lot of requests um, from people asking if I could show how I do my beading and seeing as I'm almost finished beading this mirab oh, mirabilia, I thought I'd better get this done, otherwise I'm going to have to wait a while until I'm up to the same process again. So. Um, this particular design I'm showing today is Mirabilia Mermaids of the Deep Blue, which I'm doing as a conversion. And my fabric is 28 count Night Sky Opalescent Lugana from Pulse, Pulse Stitches, yes, uh, in the UK. And I'm, I have stitched this two over two. Now, I'm just going to turn my magnifying light on so I can see a little bit better and I will zoom in for you in a moment um, to watch the actual process. So let's talk about supplies to start with. Now, I this is what I like to use when I'm beading. And when I say I like to use, I really don't like to use um, this is Invisible Thread. This particular one is Wonder Invisible Thread. There are a couple of other brands, I believe. Um, Nymo and YLI. There might even be more. I'm not sure. I've only ever used this one. As you can see, it's a pretty massive spool. And I just plan on using all this up until I change to another brand. There's no point wasting what I've got. Uh, when I said... I really don't like to use it. And you're probably wondering, well, why do you use it? I personally don't like to see the thread holding my beads in place. I like the invisible look. And if you like to use um, DMC cotton or other cotton to attach your beads, there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. This is just what I like to use or don't like to use. Um, but as I said, it... it it, look, it has its benefits for using it, and that's that's the reason why I use it. I it it um it can be difficult to work with, and if you are brand new to beading, I don't suggest you start with this because it may put you off. It's something more that if you've been beading for a while and you're looking for a challenge, you might want to give this a go. But as I said, otherwise there is absolutely nothing wrong with using DMC cotton or other cotton to attach your beads. This is just what I like to use. Um, this also, I use two strands, not the one strand as Mirabilia suggests. So on the charts, Mirabilia suggests that you attach the beads with two strands of matching cotton or one strand of thread in a half cross stitch. And I actually prefer to do two strands just to give that extra strength. And I also um, don't attach mine as a half cross stitch, but we'll get into that in a moment. Now, as well as um, the thread, obviously you need your beads. This particular design, this mermaid design, has a ton of beads. It's probably not the most beads used on a Mirabilia design, I'm sure there are many designs that use a lot more, but there are also many designs that use a lot less. So if you're starting out, maybe choose a, a Mirabilia design that doesn't have quite so many beads so you can get used to it first. Uh, this is my very highly recommended beading accessory. I don't bead without this. This is called a tacky bill, and it's basically a miniature size CD case. They all come in different designs. I don't think you can choose the design that sends you randomly. And you open it up and it's tacky, as suggested, on both sides. Please excuse this. This I've had this tacky bill for many, many, many years. And obviously it's picked up lint. It just goes to show you how effective this little case is. It's picked up lots of lint. I do not use this side. I know there is a bead there. That is because that's a reject bead. So I use that side purely to put anything that I've come across that I can't use. So they stay on that side. This is the side I use. Oh, sorry, didn't mean to knock the camera. And basically you pour your beads out here that you're, you're wanting to use. And as you can see, they don't move. Once they're on there, they're not going anywhere. 
And it's as simple as just getting your needle and putting it through the hole of the bead and taking it off the dish. It, it's really, really straightforward. But if you accidentally knock this, the beads aren't going to fall out onto the floor, unlike if you're just using a, uh, a container to hold your beads. There's always that chance of accidentally knocking it over and spilling it everywhere, like I'm sure everybody has done, and I've done it. Um, many times, especially when I've been doing diamond painting. <laughs> so yes, this has uh, literally saved my life when it comes to beading. So I highly recommend one of these. Now, as well as that, I have my beading needle. Now, this is not my normal beading needle. You'll see it's very short. A couple of days ago, I've misplaced my normal beading needle, which is normally longer and has a much bigger eye and is suitable for the regular size beads. This one is my petite bead beading needle. So the eye is much smaller on this one and it allows me to go through the much, much smaller, oh, sorry, I knocked it again, the much, much smaller beads. I don't know if you can see the eye there, but it is tiny, very, very tiny. And um, that's probably the first negative of using visible threads. Got to try and get it through there. As well as my bead, oh, and I don't know what brand that is either. This actually, this particular beading needle came in a sewing repair kit and I needed it in an emergency and luckily... It was there for me. I will have to purchase some um, decent quality beading needles. So if any of you have a particular brand you like, please comment below and um, I'll have a search for those. As well as my beading needle, I use a glass head pin when I'm beading. This comes in very, very handy, not only for counting my threads, and making a mark as to where I need to start my beading or when it comes time to remove the knot from my invisible thread so that I can get the needle off the thread for unpicking situations. I will go into that um, later in the video. Obviously, I have those on a needle minder securely on my fabric, so they're both... Um, handy. Now I have my chart, which unfortunately I can't show you due to copyright reasons, but obviously I follow that so I know exactly where I'm going to be placing my beads. Now let's quickly discuss how I hold my fabric. I like to put my fabric on my frame that I use for cross stitching. This one is a Millennium frame from Needle Needs in the UK and I love using this frame because it just gets my fabric nice and tight. However, I do not want the fabric to be nice and tight when I'm beading. The reason for that is because obviously I only have from here to here available to me to sew on. The rest is rolled and as you can see it's already rolled up in there. If I roll this too tight and keep my tension of my fabric tight like I do when I'm stitching, I run the risk of damaging my beads, like crushing, crushing them or even moving them. So I'll just move this slightly so you can see it. Move over this way. This is really, it's quite loose in there. So you can see my fabric is all loosey-goosey and nothing in there is tight. So there's plenty of room for the beads that have been rolled up and are out of the way. Sometimes I also use some um, quilting, wadding to put along here as I roll it up. I haven't done that this time around. Um, I've just managed to roll it up loosely to protect them. And the reason why I don't bead with my material in hand is I like to have both hands free when I'm beading. I have a process that I use where I hold my beading needle in my right hand 
and in my left hand, that guides the invisible thread and keeps it out of the way. So both hands are constantly busy while I'm beading. Now, I just before I start beading, I do want to go into quickly the, the recommended bead sizes. I, I feel like this is not talked about enough, especially with mirabilia designs, and anyone starting out can easily make the mistakes I've made in selecting bead sizes. Now, for this mirabilia chart, to bring it up here these are the beads here now the recommended fabric which you can see written up here somewhere here we go is well not recommended but this is what the model was stitched on it's 32 count mediterranean sea linen or 16 count mediterranean sea ada so 32 count would have been stitched two over two now, in my experience, the regular size beads, which are what these are that have been recommended, do not fit well on 32 count fabric. And it's especially when they are attached as a half cross stitch, which means the beads will lay diagonally. I have also come across this issue with 28 count fabric that has been hand dyed because during the hand dyed process, a lot of the fabrics will shrink, therefore making them around a 32 count in the end. You can fit the beads on, not in my experience, not diagonally, especially if there are a whole bunch of them placed together. If they're sparse, there won't be an issue. But Mirabilia's um, quite generally will have a whole heap placed together. I'll just move this here for you here. And you can see, as an example here, we have a whole row of them. Now, when I get so many in a row, I get to the point where I'm really starting to um, not be able to fit them in because the beads, are, the reason is the beads are slightly larger than the count of the fabric. So, as I said, when you get a whole string of them, it's very hard to fit them all in. Now, there is a way around this. You can purchase petite beads, which are exactly the same colour as the recommended beads, but in a smaller size. So how you would purchase those is where you see the number required for the bead. So example, 02011. If you wanted the petite size, you would order 402011. So that four generates the fact that it is a smaller size bead and they are exactly the same colors. The treasures, however, I believe are only one size. I may be wrong, but so far I've only been able to find them in the one size. But treasures aren't really an issue because they generally have a much bigger area that has been allocated to place them on the fabric and you generally won't have an issue with that on whichever fabric you are choosing unless you're choosing, you know, maybe a 50 count or something. I don't know. I, I don't stitch on that size, so I can't, I can't say that. Um, so, yes, had I realised this in time, as I said, this one has a ton of beads and I had already purchased them. And once I started attaching them diagonally, I knew pretty quickly that these are not going to fit. And it started looking like a really big mess. And I wasn't happy with that. I'm really fussy with my beading. <laughs> Too fussy. Um, but anyway, I decided to try them um, sideways, which is how I place them. If I zoom in a little here, bring the fabric down. There you go. You can see that they, they're placed sideways. Now, they still are a little bit big. And as I said, I do a whole line of them. I, they start getting very, very squishy. And especially even downwards, you can see where like there's three in a row there. They start to really go beyond the line of the other beads. But I'm willing to make that sacrifice. I think it still looks nice. It doesn't look too messy. And in some cases, you can just fix this by maybe removing a bead 
um, and, you know, finding your own way to make them fit. But had I decided to do this again, I probably would have chosen to purchase petite beads for this design so that I could put them on diagonally. So anyway, I'm sorry about that. That's my little rant on that. But as I said, I don't feel like that is talked about enough in the cross stitch community and it it's, can be quite confusing for those people that are starting out. So let's get to doing some beading. Now, I just want to say as well, look, even though I'm doing this video, I'm not saying this is how this is the right way to bead. This is my way to bead. This is how I like to do it. And everyone has their own way of doing everything. And as far as I'm concerned, there's no right and wrong way to do anything. As long as you are enjoying yourself, you're not getting stressed out by it, but you're enjoying yourself and, and you're loving the process, then that's the right way for you. And that's all that matters. But I'm just hoping that this video can maybe um, help people see that it's it's really, it's not difficult and it can be a fun process and watch several videos and you might find you can get tips from each and every one and then find a process that works best for you. All right, so I'm going to start with my invisible thread. So this is going to be tricky for you to see, but hopefully with being zoomed in, I mean, you can see that there. You can see it as it shimmers. So it's not completely invisible to you. And we'll see how we go. Now, as far as how much I use of this, I pretty much just eyeball it. I use about the same amount that I would for DMCs I stitch, as in I measure from fingertip to elbow and then I double it. So roughly about that. I'm, I'm not as um, fanatical about that as I am with my cotton. So I cut a piece off and I bring the two raw ends together. I'm just doing this off camera because you can't see it anyway. So just bear with me as I'm doing it. All right, so I've got my two raw ends, which, oh yeah, you can sort of see it. And I'm going to get my beading needle, which is over here. And I'm just going to do this off camera because this will be, this will take forever, sorry, if I do this while you're watching. All right, now I have learned another tip when beading with invisible, when threading your needle with invisible thread. Obviously it's, it can be really difficult to see. And I showed you the eye of this needle, which is, you know, the tiniest thing. And I really wish I didn't have to use this for the video. The tip is try and put a dark background behind you. So where the eye of the needle is, Put a dark background behind you and you can actually see the threads going through that hole a little bit better. Okay, so I've attached the thread through the eye and I've done a single knot. And I'm just going to do another knot. Okay, so you can see. And I pulled that pretty tight. Now, this is the other downside of an invisible thread. This knot's gonna come undone many times while I'm working, and I just have to re-thread it and re-knot it, which sounds like a hassle, but it has a benefit. The benefit is if I accidentally place a bead in the wrong place, or I misplace the needle through the wrong hole, and I need to fix it, it's much easier for me to undo that knot on the eye and, and unthread the thread from my needle and then I can get the the bead off so much easier it, it just it works very simply for me so I've got my raw edges here and as I pull down pull down pull down pull down I have my loop which you can just see I have my loop. So I'll use that and I will use a loop start method, which is my preferred way of starting. Now I'm just going to adjust a few things here, get myself comfortable, make sure that you have a good view and check my chart. Now I usually have my little tacky bill next to me here. 
on my fabric all ready to go. And I know my first stitch is going to be here. So we'll begin as you normally would with a loop start method through the top. So needle down through where I want to go and I pull everything through except that loop. Okay, and then I'm going to go up through the top right. Do you have a back stitch there as well? Just a little bit mindful of. Okay, pull that through. I'm holding on to my loop. And then I'm just going to put the eye of my needle through that loop and pull it. Okay, can you see it? It's caught in there. The loop's caught. Now we want that to the back of the fabric. So I'm just going to go back down through that top right hole and pull everything through. And that's all hidden and secure. So now it's time to put in the bead. So we're going to go back up through the beginning hole. Now you'll notice here that I do my cross stitches bottom left to top right, bottom right to top left. If you do yours the opposite way, then you can follow this exactly the same, but just doing it your way. So you would go up through bottom right to top left, and then bottom as uh, top right down to bottom left. <laughs> Sorry, I had to think about the reverse of that. All right, so I'm ready to, here's my tacky bill. It's got my needle and all I have to do find a bead, put it on there, and I hold it with my finger. So this whole time, my right hand is focused on this needle and the bead. My left hand is constantly holding this invisible thread out of the way. I hold it tight, not super tight, and I don't want to warp my fabric or anything, but tight enough, you can see there, to keep it out of the way. If I just let this go, this is just constantly going to knot up. Invisible thread loves to bunch up and knot up and can be a nightmare. As I said, it's, it's difficult to work with, but I have been using it for a few years now. So I pretty much know what I need to do. So we're going to go back down through that top right hole and pull this through. And then I can let go of that thread. Now, you can see that sitting in a diagonal. Now, if you were just to um, do it as the Mirabilia chart states, that's how you would leave it. And then you'd go on to your next bead. As I said, I can't fit mine on my fabric like that. So I need to do an additional step. So now I need to go up through the... bottom right. Sorry, it's a little bit tricky doing this on camera. Bottom right, just like you would do as a cross stitch, okay? Exactly like you would do to perform your cross stitch. But then instead of completing the cross, you need to go back through the whole of the bead like this. Pull that thread and then secure it by going through the top left. And pull it down. And that's it. That bead is nice and secure. Now you're probably looking at this and saying, well, why don't you just do one stitch? Being as I'm doing it over two, I could come up through this hole, place it through the bead and then straight down that hole. Much quicker process and it will still sit the same. Yes, exactly, you could do that. However, I find the beads still move around a lot and I like the fact that my beads sit really quite still like this. There's going to be no movement from them. All right, so let's do it again. Come back down to this hole, bottom left. The whole time, 
You see that pulling? That's my hand underneath holding the invisible thread. I'm still keeping it tight underneath as I do on top. My left hand does that the entire time. Grab another bead and go down through that top right hole. So I think for me in future, I will definitely consider buying petite beads for my mirabilia so that I can attach them diagonally. Now, as I've just been talking, my knot has come unthreaded from my needle. I said that would happen and I probably just didn't quite do the knot tight enough. So I'm just going to re-thread that. All right, that's done. And so now all that's left to do is we go back through the hole of that bead. Oops, being very careful not to catch my other threads. And that's the other thing you need to be very careful of. As you're beading, the thread will catch on to other beads nearby. So holding this again gives you more control over where that be uh, sorry over where it goes all right and we'll do another one load up my needle now the other advantage of the invisible thread is the fact that i can actually run it through the back of my work and not have to worry about it being seen. So if I had, for instance, if I had some beads over here, that are, sorry, over here that I needed to do, I could just run the invisible thread over here and you're never gonna see it. So I like that aspect of it as well because obviously mirabilias don't always have beads attached to the cross stitch design. They have beads floating in midair. So it's nice to be able to do that as well. And I'll show you what I do when I need to unpick something. I'm so sorry, I keep knocking that camera. I've got it very close so that you can see what I'm doing. But I run the risk of knocking it all the time. Can't quite see that hole there, I think that's right. Now, beading needles, if you're new to this, are super duper sharp. So please be extra careful. Maybe consider wearing a thimble um, because they generally will draw blood immediately. The other night I stabbed myself with one and instant blood, which had to quickly run away from my needlework. Make sure I didn't stain anything. And because you're trying to locate where to go, it's just very high risk of grabbing those. And sometimes the bead doesn't quite sit right and I like to use my needle. So I think I might've placed that in the wrong spot. So I'm gonna use this time to show you how I can unpick. So here's my needle with my knots, which have moved down a bit. Oh, look, they've actually come undone. All right, that's not a very good example, is it? I wanted to show you how I actually unknot them. All right, so I'm gonna show you, here's my knots on my needle. So I just get my pin And I put it through the knot and pull it through. Sometimes it comes out in one. Sometimes you've got to do it again. I think that worked. Yep. Okay, so that's come off completely. 
Now I can just literally put my needle through that bead and carefully lift it off while pulling out those, pulling out the threads. Oh, sorry, it was a bit tricky. All right, so there's the, the bead I just removed. Put that back in my tacky bill. And then I can just go back, knot my needle again, and start it again. So it's a much simpler process to unpick a bead. Sometimes it can be tricky otherwise. If you try and go in through the same hole, to get the thread, um, sometimes you can just create more of a mess. And no one likes to unpick, but I've had to unpick beads many times. And this process works really well for me. And it's definitely a benefit with knotting the thread to the needle rather than elsewhere. Okay, so it's knotted again now. Let's go back here and do a little bit more. So we're in the right spot, pick up the uh, bead. Make sure I come up through the right hole this time. I think I was a thread off or something and that's all it takes sometimes to for the beetle not beetle for the bead to not sit straight and, and you know beads just naturally do move around a little bit they're not all perfectly shaped now when it comes to beading a design I don't bead um per color. So I don't like pick one color of bead and just do everything in the area of that color. Um, what I like to do is I like to bead in sections. So for example, if I was doing this section and there was pink, then silver, then green, then pink, then green, then silver, I would just, I would work out a process of how I'm going to stitch. So I'm going to start up here. I'm going to work my way down here, up and around here. And that will be my process so that I would just choose the relevant colors as I'm coming up and around, as opposed to, you know, going from here over to here, over to here with that color, then coming back here, then doing another color. To me, that's, that's more confusing for me doing it that way. I don't know how other people do it, um, but that just is easier for me. And, and as I complete a section, then I mark it off on my chart I am a very slow beater. Some people are quite fast. I'm very, very slow. This is probably because I have to keep knotting my thread to my needle um, and fiddling around with the placement of the beads a little bit. But it's okay. It's all about enjoying the process, having fun with it. I can bead while I'm watching TV as long as it's not something that requires me to look up at the TV all the time. I just like to, you know, I can put on a movie and listen to it and just bead and occasionally look up and that's fine. I'm happy to do that. I'm so sorry. I keep knocking this camera. Really hoping I'm not making you seasick. Um, so yeah, as I said, I'm not saying that this is the way to bead. This is just how I do it. I'm self-taught. Um, I think I did watch a couple of videos when I was starting out. I can't really remember who they were, just to get a general gist of how the beads should lay. I think they were all diagonal. Um, and then when I came across the problem of them not fitting, um, yeah, it just, frustrated me so I needed to find a way to make them fit and 
it's come unthreaded again, would you believe? It, this doesn't normally happen this quickly. I need to secure my knot a bit tighter. Um, also, this invisible thread does stretch too. So it's something to keep in mind. Not to, if you use this stuff, don't, don't pull it too tight when you're um, doing your beading because you don't want it to warp the overall design. See how quickly I threaded that? And that's because I was talking, wasn't um, focusing on the fact that you're watching. <laughs> that's the key. So I don't have a lot more of this particular one to go. I've just got um, the fin of this one and the fin of the pink one, and I'm done. Having said that, there is still a lot of beads to pl be placed around these fins. But I'm really looking forward to it and I'm hoping to get it finished this weekend. Um, I haven't been feeling very well today. I have a very sore neck. So we'll see how much of it I can do. And hope for the best. But I'm itching to get back to my other projects. And hopefully I've covered this. Hopefully, if you're new to beading, you haven't done it before, um, I ho really hope you'll give it a go. It's It does look scary, but I don't think it is. And maybe start off using the DMC to attach the beads. I would recommend using a color that matches the beads or possibly even a color that matches the fabric. Um, see which one, see which one is the least, sorry, just checking the whole placement of that one. Yeah, see which one is the least noticeable. And then at some stage, if you want to try the invisible thread, I mean, no one says you have to, but um, if you wanted to try it and you're up for a challenge, go for it. I I can't see myself. I've I've never used DMC cotton to do beading, not not once. Um, and I just don't really ever plan to. Really, I figure I can do it this way now. Might as well just stay with it. Um, people have said to me before, Nymo is a good brand. Visible Thread. I haven't ever tried it. As I said, the one I use, look, this stacks is 1,500. What is it? 1,500 yards on that spool. And I've had it for years. So you certainly get your money's worth. It lasts a really, really long time. And I'm just going to keep using it. Maybe when it's empty, I might try something else next time. A different brand. We'll see. So I think that's all I wanted to talk about as far as the beading process. Oh, I will show you how I end my thread at the back because you're probably all wondering that. So let's just do a few more. I, I, I'm very frugal with my DMC when I'm stitching. I try to use up every last little bit of cotton before I end my thread. With the invisible thread, I'm a little bit the same, but I'm also mindful that I need to allow enough that I can knot it at the back. So... I'm not quite as frugal and I'm quite happy, to be honest, to waste a fair bit um, of this because I've got so much of it to spare. It goes such a long way. If you find using this, your 
thread is knotting up a lot at the back maybe try my tip with holding the thread in your left hand keeping it out the way that has really saved me with my stitching and I can stitch so much faster by doing that um, the other tip is maybe don't um, use as long a thread shorten how much you're using that will help prevent it from knotting up as much all right so we'll do one more the third one on this row and then i'll show you how i finish at the back You don't need a frame either if, if you want to bead. You can certainly bead in hand. I think, I'm think i pretty sure a lot of people do bead in hand. You might find that easier. As I said, please try your own way. Try lots of people's ways and, and see what method works best for you. You might find a little bit of help from me, a little bit of help from someone else, and you can just put it together and find your own complete technique. That's all that matters. Just, just enjoy what you're doing. There's no right or wrong way. All right. So even though I've got a fair bit of thread left on here, I would normally just keep going. I'm going to finish off at the back so you can see how I finish off. So just move my tacky bill out the way. All right. I'm just going to flip this over to the back. Here we are at the back. Locate my needle. Where is it? There it is. Let's just go back a little bit because it's gone a bit blurry. It's trying to focus on all that metallic, I think. All right, so you can see our thread is down here. So normally what I do is I'll run it behind several stitches, say something like that. I've got it behind about four stitches. It's still a little bit blurry. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit more. Okay. And then I will just go behind, say maybe two stitches. Bring the needle up and as a loop forms, I'll put my needle through the loop, whoops, to create a bit of a knot and I'll pull that down. Then I'll go back through and do that again. it tight and then do it again so I generally do about three knots and then I can cut that off and that's secure I haven't had any issues with that coming undone now do also bear in mind the invisible thread um, can melt so I don't suggest ironing your piece after using invisible thread. Otherwise, you may find it will all melt away and then all your beads will fall off. So that's a pretty important tip that maybe I should have said right at the beginning. But yeah, maybe, maybe give your um, piece an iron first before using that. If, if you're someone that likes to iron after you've beaded, maybe consider DMC thread instead. So that's it for the tutorial today on how I do my beading. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something from it. And I'd like to thank all of those people that requested this video. And I hope to do some more videos like this in future for you showing how I, how I do things. So I hope you all have a great stitching day. Thank you for watching and I will see you all again very soon. Bye for now.